Hello once again, another video about how to paint a portrait in watercolor, again of one of my granddaughters. I want to show you all the single brush strokes and I hope it's not too boring. I want to show you everything. Also in the end how I almost ruined this portrait. I hope you like this tutorial. <music> Of course I start first with the drawing and I measured a little bit how it will fit in my piece of paper. So here is the end of the red dot, her head, forehead, you see once again it comes down on drawing skills. Like always it's about drawing skills. In the past I have made only a few portraits in watercolor. I was pleased with the result and I often have been asked to make tutorials on this technique. I hesitated for a long time to do that. I barely knew how I did it myself. How could I tell about it? For me it also has been a trial and error technique. A quote of Samuel Beckett really inspired me. Ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. Lately I make a couple of test paintings for each portrait to know what my approach would be. I'm a little better prepared now. So here is my third watercolor tutorial. I hope you like it. My colors, yellow ochre, cadmium lemon yellow, raw umber, cadmium red deep, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, cerulean blue, sap green, hookah green and mauve. Some extra tissues, very important to have them at hand. The paper. Fabriano 1264, 300 grams for mixed media. An all-purpose paper that I came across lately and it's fantastic. This paper soaks less than the more cotton-based ones. Uh, in watercolor you build up from the lights to the darks. You save the highlights here and here. The next step is a wash all over the face of the skin tone. Here it's bluish, here it's reddish. Cerulean blue to start with. But there is also maybe some raw umber. And later I must make a soft connection there where the hair comes on top. Let me see. I go to the shadow part of the eye, the eye socket. And let me introduce some mauveish color here. And I paint on top of the whole eye. Try to soften this edge with a dry brush. And then immediately I continue with the reddish ochreish flesh color. More ochre. The difficulty also is that uh, in watercolor, later when the paint is dry, it shows up lighter. So uh, I must keep that in mind. Let me go down here. I forget about the ear. Well, it's very light, so I can add in this wet area more paint. Ochre and cadmium red. where the hair above the ear meet that flesh color, I need a shadow. Let me see if I can do that right away because it's a soft one here. Right. I must soften this because 
I don't want to see an edge over here, so I dab on top, I hover on top a little bit. So I prepare the next connection. The cheekbone is a little bit different from what I did. Right, well, you see now I have to clean my plate again. It's always about cleaning, you know. Clean my plate and I go right away to the nose. A little bit of the same combination of ochre and cadmium red. And I think I forget about the whole shape in the beginning, only the, the basic color the basic tonal value. And going up, well, now let me add a little bit first on the tip of the nose. Uh, you know already by now I love red noses, so let me start already doing that a little bit. Later I must reshape. Uh, as I told you in the beginning, this paper is very good for reshaping, for correcting. The paint does not uh, enter so much in the paper. It, the paper doesn't soak so much the color. On the eye socket of her right eye is more shadow. Cerulean blue and Hair. Here it's more yellowish, ochreish, and here there is a blue reflection of the blue sky above her head, so there is more blue in. Let me do first this part on the forehead, the, the more yellowish one. Um, yellow ochre, and that may be yellow ochre, and that's maybe too yellowish, so I add a little bit of this mauve, always also in watercolor. Mauve is the solution. And I take care that I don't paint that, that light on the turning of the head, of the hair. And I mean this light f f zone. with the shadow over here. Right. Well, I don't want to see so much of an edge where the hair ends, so... with the dry brush I make it a loose end. I don't see any uh, start off, I don't see any edge where the hair starts on top, so... Now, this part of the hair, as I said, is more bluish and uh, greyish. I start with some raw umber. and phthalo blue makes it greenish I know but I think that's not too bad right so once again the light part I save 
and I introduced some shifts of color, cerulean blue, more mauveish. I can't uh, repeat the exact color of the photograph. When I'm able to introduce more colors, the more um, vivid, uh, lively watercolor will grow. Mauve and draw umber. Here I don't know because there are some hairs running around. The dark one behind what I will paint is that red dot here. Going down the whole thing becomes lighter and also again more yellowish. But before that some move and on this part still here some well, I don't know I do that later yellowish too much yellow so a little bit of mauve a yellowish I mean yellow ochre you understand Painting and talking sometimes is hard. Well, I don't complain. It's my own choice. Well, this here is okay, here is okay, but now I must make the connection of the two zones. So with the dry brush, this will be solved later. You see, it's very subtle in color. Later I can build up more color. I do first that red pom-pom because I want to know the overall color scheme and the tonal value. It's not pure red, there is also mauve. There's a lovely bluish purplish edge here and I don't know if I can make that in watercolor. Watercolor does, well, violet, uh, the purple is a difficult color to make. Yeah. And I add, load my brush with paint and on that I dab, and now my I must take care that it doesn't run too much down, so I lift my paper a little bit. Let me add a little bit more here. reshape a little bit this part and the magic of this paper is that I can still correct all these uh, edges like here for instance is more soft maybe a little bit here softer and some of these um, strokes run until the end, until it connects here. I first, I think I first make something of a surrounding because I want to feel the whole picture. I decided to make here a little bit darker 
to show up the light, to do something here in the background to save some hairs. And maybe let me do that first. A sort of, well, neutral gray. And I don't have neutral gray, so I try to make a sort non color. Well, non color is far too much because in watercolor I want to see the color, what color it is. And I, I save some places where I want to see the hair. It's a little bit the luck of the draw, you know. Uh, if you're lucky, it shows up. If you're bad luck, then it disappears. Maybe some more cerulean blue. I do something here as well, and an indication of some green, I think. To give shape, not too much color, it's background. To give shape to the hair. This is the magic of watercolor. You lay down you lay down some brush strokes and when you're lucky some magic shows. Bad luck and it shows a horrible thing. Even to me. Now this this part gives shape to her face. So I must make it very precise. Very precise. Her lovely nose. Hmm. Children have lovely noses. Well, all noses are good. But I see her lovely nose. You see, I introduce some shifts of color to make it more interesting. Here the shape is not really good. Give it a little bit more of power, but it has to be a non-color. I mean, not really blue or re red or green. The upper lip, I see something of her cheek over there. Until this woolen collar. Cold winter in Madrid. That's also what I want to show, the cold temperature outside. Now it comes down to some abstract brush strokes. Maybe I can let it run down here with a just a little bit of water. Take care that it doesn't want that it doesn't become too fancy. Maybe I want to 
want to add an accent here. I mean here. Still the paint is a little bit wet, so I can add, I don't want this board. Maybe you notice that the, as I said in the beginning, watercolor shows up lighter. When you paint you think this is dark, and once it's dry it's half the darkness that you had in mind. So. Where shall I continue? Let me do the eyes and the nose and the mouth, because first things first. And also, um, when I don't touch this too much, I can judge in a couple of minutes if I like it or not. If you keep, keep concentrating on this part, you forget about this. So it's good to, to at random attack some details. First, I have to make a little bit more of shadow in the eye socket. That's what I have to do first. So back to the bigger brush and later I come back. Draw umber, move. And there is cerulean blue in. Let me mix it. From the eyebrow to the eye. if the eyebrow is far too high. I think so. So, take the edge to the other side. Here also soft. Where the eye I don't know how it is called, this, this volume of the eye on the eye socket here is more bluish. Maybe that's too much, but... Also connecting with the air. I go to the eye. She has blue eyes. You don't want that blue so so blue. So I knock it down a little bit with mauve. I give it a first wash. I know my granddaughter, she has beautiful big eyes. So that's the eye, and now the eyelashes. These are dark. I don't have any black here, so I must make a sort of dark, 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 could be black, so I mix the darkest that I have, maybe some alizarin that I didn't use yet. This could be black, okay? One eyelash here. And one eyelash here. And I don't make a perfect line. Uh, like I do in oil color, in oil paint as well. I just sort of hang around the truth. I, I don't want to be I don't want to explain so much over there. Uh, watercolor is also a little bit of the magic of the brush strokes. But still it's really there, so half dry brush. I dab on the 
corner of the eye. Okay, the pupil. Uh, now she's already looking, my little girl. Before I continue here, I must add some more shadow on the cheek. I clean my plate uh, uh, in oil. I said always keep your kitchen clean. The same goes for watercolor. I want to add a little bit of the shadow of the cheekbone on the cheek. There is blue in. I did not expect to use so much this cerulean blue, but well, I have to. Here it starts darker. And then you go on towards the, what I said, the shadow of that part, the shadow of the cheekbone. Well, it's not a shadow, it's, there is an indication of the cheekbone. I'm not afraid that it's far too dark. Going down, I add some more red. Later I will correct the value. Maybe you, you think, well, now he is going to ruin it. <laughs> Maybe I will. But first I dry this one here a little bit. Then I go up with a dry brush and make a softer connection. Here is not so much of a connection. This is a little bit to be shaved. I don't want this white dot over here. I go back to the nose. Some indication of the tip of the nose. Here, here, the nostril wing in the shadow. This part, the cast shadow, usually also in oil paint, is more red. So, I, you can't see, I think. I will add a little bit of red over here but but I'm far too early the whole nose has to get a step dark so okay kill you darlings there we go her mouth there is mauve in and red in or shall I take some crimson? Try to shape it well. Towards the corner of the eye, the uh, corner of the mouth. bottom lip in the bottom lip there is more crimson and you see I'm halfway the value that I need I see I made a mistake a little bit of a mistake over here so I try to reshape this is far too much to the left. Okay. Building up a little bit more of value. The separation between the lips, the darkness in the mouth, is crimson. Maybe some green to make it 
to make it a little bit of brownish. I don't do that with blue or black, even in watercolor. I don't have any black on my palette. I make always this, well, I try to make always these accents warmer. I left, let this dry. I continue first with the ear because I don't want to ruin the shape here. Um, there is also a dark, darker shadow in the ear. First the cast shadow here. Also darker, uh, also warmer than you would see. Here somewhere. Well. There is a shadow under her bottom lip. A lovely, <laughs> all colors are lovely. A lovely shadow here. Soft, soft shadow. Turning towards the corner of the mouth and then it disappears. So now I go back to the nose. Since it's dry over here now, crimson. And the nostril is dark, never use blue or black there, make it a sort of brown, reddish brown, crimson and sub green, the dark shadow, never use black or blue here. Now that I come back with that red accent that I mentioned earlier, see if I can do that here. Going up it's softer. Before I continue I want to show some of the design of her shawl. And um, this is crimson and red. And I didn't prepare so much of drawing because I, I don't want to make it perfect, like always. I love to see some handwriting. same time this must not be too demanding so uh, maybe the pattern is far too heavy that looks better you can always add some more uh, some more now the on top it's a little bit more it's, it's lighter ones and of course it doesn't matter so much if it's really correct on top of the edge because I had to correct the edge remember I don't know what this is but it turns inside and then it becomes darker and I need the darkness because I want to sh give shape to the chin. And uh, it has to be correct so touches a little bit the bottom lip Let's 
since I have that color here, I make some accent there. Make this edge a little bit softer. Continue with the design of the shawl. Something like this. And for the same reason I save some strings of hair. I try to do that. Come back here. Some little accents here. And more of the pattern, but I don't want to explain it too much, so I add more water. Broken lines, sometimes I, I want to paint more white holes, makes it interesting to see. Although her hair in the picture stops here, I want to introduce more of that lock of hair, as I said, so I'll save it like that. Now the pattern continues and I wonder how much I must make of the pattern because maybe it's too much. The darker one, more green to the red makes it a different. You see I'm sort of hanging around with my brush. Have fun, let's say have fun. Here it gets... The shape differs. Maybe I make something of the uh, coat. Uh, maybe that's what I need. Taylor blue. But I want to knock it down a little bit with raw umber. Maybe only the cast shadow. Oh, I don't know. Here it comes down to the abstract quality of her painting, so... Shall I let it disappear here? So what's left to be done? The mouth here I need some more indication of the eye. I need some more uh, layers on top of the hair and maybe some indication here. I'm not sure. I feel that I could make more of a statement or emphasize the statement over here. So I add some paint to the moisture. I go back to this part of the hair. That's the most important thing to be done now. There is that bluish shine of the blue sky on blonde hair. Bigger brush. So. I try to start with Stelo Blue and Raw Umber. More blue. Maybe Mauve and Raw Umber 
is a better solution. And I want to save some locks of hair. far too greenish. Carefully, carefully, carefully I try to make some interesting shapes. At the same time it must explain that's her hair. And here towards that red pompon, uh, it gets darker. And I don't use black, although it's becoming darker. This is a little bit too greenish. Let me see if I can correct it a little bit with that blue. No, it's still too greenish. Let me knock it down a little bit. Um, let it disappear. So with a with a dry brush, no, with a Water, only water brush, give some water and it now it will run into that moisture. Here the turning of the hair lock turns away. If these spots are far too heavy, I can knock them down later. I will do some of this on this part. I let it dry this part and I make some indication of some green over there. I can't make it that green because um, it is background, so it had to be knocked down with a little bit of this mauve. I want to give shape to that ball. Dangerous what I'm doing because if I introduce far too many funny uh, areas, then it loses the power, so... Is it too green over there? Maybe because... Background. What can I do to repair that? Give it some more red. This form going down a little bit with a thin wash of cerulean blue and once I made it I connect it. Reshape a little bit the bottom lip or reshape let's say more accent. I must take care that I don't touch the deep dark over there. Now it's dry, okay, no problem. A 
a little bit of crimson here. And also where it turns around. That's too much. I should add some more deeper shadow here where the cheek turns into the shawl and there is blue in, once again cerulean blue, but also some of this mixture. Let me see. Here. And with a half dry brush I soften the edge. Now, before I, no, I want to say I want to make a little bit lighter here, but before I do that I give it a wash to give it more of a, a reddish color on the cheek. My big brush, cadmium yellow, uh, cadmium uh, red and some ochre. And I mean here. Once again you see, well maybe this shape is, oh no, nothing happens. You see, I dry my brush on that tissue. And I can man manipulate. Is that the right word? Manipulate. Well, some more red on the ear. And once again, once the paint is dry, it will turn out lighter. Now I see that I, I'm, I am um, raising the contrast on her head. So here also, you see pure mauve. I make some more accents in her hair. Some of these to red, make it more yellowish. On in the lightest part of the hair, that same color gets more mauveish. Shall I move, remove it? Is it too much over there? Yes, it is. The eye here has a soft shadow under the eyelid. I mean, under the eyelash, there is the eyelid itself. And also, a more reddish, a small reddish accent for the tear duct here. It will turn out less dark. Well, where to continue? I don't know. Maybe I should finish. Maybe I should finish. Now I erase here some pencil drawing. Well, sometimes it doesn't bother, but here it was too much visible. Now with my surgical blade I can scrape off the paint from the paper. Here mm, 
maybe this edge some of these lights extended I'm sort of happy with the whole result, but not with this red pom pom. And I know in watercolor I can't get any better. Eh? It's dirty. That, that fresh magenta color of that pom pom I can't get in watercolor. So what I will do, I will do it in gouache. Magenta in gouache and also some white for the part that's lighter and maybe once again i will ruin my my portrait but well let me be brave look this is a powerful magenta color going up more white not a perfect circle but maybe it jumps out and maybe it's a bad idea Maybe it's too solid, too opaque. Well, that was the danger. I'm not sure if I did a good job. This is it. I hope you liked it. See you next time in another video. Bye bye.